It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, here's a headline from last week. You know, last week, the entire country was colder than normal, I think. Most of you know this, but we heard these stories. I mean, down here in Arkansas, folks, not not so much. I mean, we had cold temperatures, but it wasn't anything that we weren't we aren't used to, right? But then, of course, you know, up north, you have people, you know, experiencing uh, the negative, you know, negative 10, 20, 30, I think even 50 degrees. I mean, and you had all these, uh, you know, stories about um, millennials who have never experienced this kind of cold before. This headline over at Breitbart, Donald Trump keeps mocking global warming leftists with record cold temperatures. Because, you know, I'm telling you, there's so many things that Donald Trump does to troll the other side that talk radio has been doing for years. Like every time it's cold, like as a talk radio host, I'm always like, oh, yeah, global warming. Hey, did you hear it's so cold outside? I saw a Democrat with his hands in his own pockets. Um, anyway. So uh, here to talk a little bit more about this, I want to introduce you to a guy uh, who is author of a book uh, by the name of uh, Inconvenient Facts. You should, you should look it up on uh, Amazon, Inconvenient Facts, the science that Al Gore doesn't want you to know. He's a geologist with more than 35 years of experience researching and studying various aspects of Earth's processes. His name is Gregory Wrightstone. Gregory, welcome to the program this morning. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Now, that was funny about the Democrats with their hands in their own pocket. I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> I don't know. I heard it a long time ago. I don't know. I, I did, certainly didn't make it up. Uh, Gregory, what are the chances that I'm interviewing a geologist by the last name of Wright Stone? You've got to have heard that one before, right? Oh, you, you'd be surprised how many people pass up on that. Yeah, it was, uh, it's incredible. There's another guy. I talk a lot in hurricane season about hurricanes, and the top hurricane guy at NOAA, is a guy whose last name is Landsea, Christopher Landsea. What a great name for a for a hurricane guy. That is, that's fantastic. Almost as good as a guy by the name of Wrightstone as a geologist. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, so tell us about this, Inconvenient Facts, the science that Al Gore doesn't want you to know. What made you want to write that book? Yeah, I didn't set out to write a book. I really didn't. I, I set out to seek the truth. Uh, this was a quest for the truth. As a geologist, I knew some of what we were being told about climate change was just wrong. It just was. I knew it through my scientific background with, with geology. I suspected other things were, but you know and your listeners know we hear so much contradictory information. So I I said, you know, I'm going to set out, and I set out, again, to seek the truth, and I went back to the base data from NASA, from NOAA, from peer-reviewed studies, and frankly what I found out was shocking. Uh, most of what we're being told about climate change, it, the actual science facts and data tells it's it's 180 degrees opposite. Now it's not. <clears throat> I'm I'm not saying climate change isn't happening. It is. I'm not saying the carbon dioxide and human caused carbon dioxide isn't increasing. It is. And I admit that that increase in CO2 has a warming effect on the atmosphere. It just it has to. It does. But I'll just argue it's fairly modest and greatly overwhelmed by the same natural forces driving temperatures uh, since the dawn of time. And the other aspect to this, the, the second half is these alarm, climate alarmists uh, will tell you of all these horrific, what I call climate apocalypse events that are they're going to happen 50 or 80 years in the future. I look at what's actually happening today, and as we get into this discussion, you'll learn more about this, but I see an earth that's prospering, thriving, and greening, I see an earth and humanity that are also prospering and thriving. And I see that it's due to climate change. Climate change is having an overwhelmingly beneficial result on humanity and the earth. Well, so, you know, when you talk about that, I've always, um, you know, thought about the fact that, like, you know, yeah, of course, climate changes. Um, you know, sometimes uh, there's a place that'll get colder, and then there's another place on the earth that'll get warmer. And, you know, there's there's kind of a give and take there, um, but the the whole question is like like you were just saying, you know, this idea of man made climate change, meaning the answer is, and this is just my interpretation, the answer is always socialism. Uh, that's always the yep. answer to try to fix climate change. Oh, it is. 
Yeah, I, uh, and the, what, what they need to do, they want things like the Paris Climate Accord. They want things like a carbon tax. This is a huge new revenue source for governments. And it, it talk, we talk uh, Paris Climate Accord just enables uh, global governance of, of individual countries. Uh, what we see here um, is that the, uh, the new uh, Green New Deal that was uh, just proposed by a, an alarming number of Democrats and even more alarming by some Republicans, it's, I'm not exaggerating when I say that that is a socialist manifesto masquerading as environmental policy. It just is. just the litany of nearly every socialist proposal over the last 30 years uh, is included and thrown into this thing from uh, guaranteed jobs for all at a living wage to uh, uh, cutting military spending by 50 percent and closing bases all over the world. It, it's, a, it's a crazy hodgepodge. In fact, you might not, you might, you and your listeners may, may not be aware, but within that Green New Deal, they're going to um, discourage or forbid non-essential private transportation. In other words, you can't get in your car and drive out to Home Depot and anymore. It'll, uh, you'll be have, have to take the bus, and it'll be a through a new federal mass transit system, so everybody can get around without driving yes. there. Uh, Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. crazy. And that's, and that's just the, that's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. What's in this Green New Deal? Be, but, for, be afraid. Yeah, and be that, very that afraid. is their that, that certainly is their dream. We're talking with Gregory Wrightstone. He's the author of Inconvenient Facts: The Science That Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know. Uh, he is a geologist. He's been doing this for thirty five years. Um, so, when it comes to man made climate change, mm-hmm. um, let's say that they're right, and that we're mm-hmm. having this um massive uh, you know we've got to alter our behavior in a, in a way to me it's just preposterous that we would know even how to alter our behavior and that we could affect the weather i mean and i say the weather because that's really to me what they're what they're doing i mean i, I say this I, i've said this a lot of times anytime i have somebody who is an authority like yourself on um you know here in arkansas several years ago we had some tornadoes came through and they were just devastating to some local communities here and about that time, under the Obama administration, they released a report uh, saying that we have to uh, do something about climate change. And, and if we do, um, we won't see these weather events like tornadoes that, you know, we live in Tornado Alley. That we've always seen tornadoes. Um, and I just thought how offensive that is. Like, if you drive less or if you get an electric car or some hybrid car, maybe your house would have still been there. And the tornado, that, it, it's just, it's insane. It's like uh, doing a, a, a rain dance. I think you'd have better luck controlling the weather doing a rain dance. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, that? well uh, the, let's get back to this about whether or not man's controlling. There are a couple of scientists that I respect that, that do believe that, that the increase in CO2 may be affecting up to 50% of the temperature rise we've seen over the last 150 or so years. I'll disagree with them. The majority of skeptics don't believe that. But even so, if you look at the climate models that are used, they overpredict the warming that we will see by two and a half to three times too much. And, you know, if we look in the rearview mirror, let's just th- have your have your listeners put on their thinking caps. Look in the rearview mirror. What have we seen for the last 100 or 150 years? We've seen the greatest advances in technology, agriculture, humanity, um, life-saving medicines, um, decreases in, in worldwide poverty, advances in energy. We see nothing, but we, we've had in the last 100, 150 years, 5,000 years of, of advances squeezed into the last 100 or so years. Just complete wonderful things happening, happening, happening. These guys look forward, and they see nothing but doom and despair, calamity, death, uh, apocalypse. Well, if we look through the the, the vast, the last, say, 400, 4,500 5, 4, years of human history, we see that there were other warming periods very similar to what we're in right now, and those each one of those ended up a lot warmer than we are right now, and each one of those warming periods was associated with a great rise in civilization and prosperity for humanity. There's a tremendous, this is one, the one thing if your listeners take nothing else away, there's a strong correlation between the rise and fall of temperatures and the rise and fall of civilizations. That during warm periods, the food is bountiful, crops are, are bountiful, you can feed the population. 
Uh, and if uh, during the cold periods is when really the crap hit the fan, we would see crop failure, pestilence, and mass depopulation every time. Rise and fall of civilizations correlates to the rise and fall of temperatures, and they're telling us just the opposite. Um, each one of these warming periods were very, very, very beneficial. In fact, I, I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, if you look at Inconvenient Facts YouTube, I've got a great video um, on there on the relationship between the witch hunts of Europe in the late Middle Ages and the rise and fall of temperatures. It was, it's really cool. Wow. A real strong relationship. There might have been twenty or 30,000 supposed witches uh, killed, burned at the stake, or drowned uh, during that time frame. And it was all because of, uh, as we went into the devastating cold temperatures of the Little Ice Age, crops failed, and uh, half the population, population of Iceland perished. It's thought a third of the population of the entire Earth uh, perished during that time. And it's related to cold. Mm. It's not. Re- it's the warm periods that are really, really good historically. And they're telling us just the opposite. And can I, can I jump? You had also mentioned about tornadoes. 26 tornadoes have definitely been a long-term decline. 2016 had the second long, lar- second fewest tornadoes, um, F3 or greater, uh, in the history of, of NOAA, and that goes back to 1850. 2013 had the lowest. So here in the last few years, we've had the first and second lowest number of tornadoes in the history of the United States. Again, completely opposite of what we're being told. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about what we are being told. More importantly, who is doing the telling? So where does the media come in here, and what responsibility do they have? I mean, they're the ones that have got an entire generation of people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez thinking that we've only got 12 years left on the planet. Yeah, I can I can kind of – she's she's not the – the, the brightest bulb in the in in, the, in our arsenal. Obviously. Oh yeah, I mean so, she's. I, I was saying the other day. I mean, blondes everywhere are thanking her. I mean she's putting it into <laughs> dumb blonde jokes. Um, can I borrow that? You can. Um, uh, it was a meme. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't come up with that one either. Okay. All right. Well, you're getting some good ones there, but the, <laughs> but you're right. I don't really so much blame her because she's a product of of what we're being told, and and we're being told that supposedly by 97 percent of the scientists, which is I do put a whole chapter in my book. Um, and you can, your listeners can learn more by going to inconvenientfacts.xyz, and uh, uh, which you can do there. And where was I going with that? Um, oh yes, with the uh, with the Green New Deal. If I open the book up, you know, why are they doing it? I think is the question. And I open the book up with a quote from H. L. Mencken. He says he talks about how governments and institutions need to impose what he calls imaginary hobgoblins of alarm. And they use these hobgoblins of alarm to frighten the population. And the population needs to be scared to death in order to accept otherwise onerous and punishing regulations like the Paris Climate Accord or carbon tax. I mean, well, let me ask, why in the world, why in the world would we, um, why, why in the world would we, Paul, impose economically crippling sanctions on the United States. Why would we do it? We wouldn't. The only reason to do it is if we're standing on the edge of this climate apocalypse precipice and that by decreasing our carbon dioxide output, we could, we could forestall that, that looming apocalypse. Uh, so they need, they need a frightened population. Uh, we see no better evidence of that than in this last national climate assessment uh, released back in December at a great fanfare. I mean that thing was like a they it was like a walk through the book of revelation. They <laughs> predicted everything but flaming toads falling out of the sky. Uh their main thing they pointed at was was forest fires, which I I use when I talk to people all over the country and if there's a a group down in your neck of the woods that want me to come speak, we can talk about it. Uh it will be entertaining and and lightning and scientific. Uh but I use forest fires as a great example because this last National Climate Estate Assessment on the front and back pages had pictures of forests in flame. And they st- flatly stated that increasing for- forest fires were due to global warming. But the experts in the data tell us exactly the opposite. Forest and wildfires have been in a long-term decline for more than 100 years, and the experts at the Canadian Fire Service and here in the United States 
tell it's due to climate change. Mm -hmm. Even in California, the CAL FIRE data, if you go to my website, I've got a page devoted to it. You can see the data on California. I've got a blog on the California fires. You can see what CAL FIRE says. The CAL FIRE data shows that California, the number of fires, get this, hold on, has been declined by 50% over the last 30 or so years. Who knew? You didn't, did you? No, not at all. You, everybody, I, when I, before I got into it and looked at it, I thought forest fires were increasing. Well, why wouldn't you? That's what we're being told. But the data is, is stark and clear and overwhelming that forest fires are decreasing. It's because of a, an increase in soil moisture content, which is dampening the fires. And that soil moisture increase is due to a uh, combination of increasing temperatures leading to more precipitation. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's what yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. And also CO2 fertilization effect mean that plants don't need as much water. So they're not, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not sucking the water out of the soil and contributing to the aridity. Because there, there are three things you need for a forest fire. You need an ignition source, you need fuel, and you need arid conditions. And we're, man is contributing on, to the detriment of all three of those. Wow. Well, and you also have Smokey the Bear. I mean, you know, only I can prevent forest fires. He's been telling me that for a while. So, I mean, maybe that's some of it, too. Yeah, the, the, it's forest, man. In California, we see a little number has declined. The area burned has increased, right. and that's due to poor forest management. Yeah, and, and the president actually has even uh, said that. Um, we're talking with Gregory Wrightstone. Last question on this. Are you alarmed at all, speaking of climate alarmists, are you alarmed at all with the – it's almost a religion to some of these individuals in terms of if you disagree, then you are a heretic. Well, I'm called, I'm called a science denier a lot, and I'm, I'm, I'm attacked pretty good. Uh, and, but, you know, I, I'm, I feel like an old-time uh, evangelist traveling the country spreading the good news of the gospel of, of increasing CO2. I see benefits, not, not horrific consequences. And I'll, I'll advise, we just got approval yesterday from Apple for our new smartphone app. It's a powerful tool. If they go to the app app store, either for Android or Apple, and uh, search for inconvenient facts, you'll get all this information, the 60 facts in a chart, and associated videos in the palm of your hand. Powerful tool. Awesome. Powerful. Awesome. Well, I'm certainly going to check it out. Folks, he's Gregory Wrightstone. He's a geologist. He's an author. The book is Inconvenient Facts, the Science That Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know. Gregory, uh, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you for spending time with us this morning. You bet. Stay warm. All righty. You too. Folks, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Back in just a moment.